Welcome back to the channel, you guys. Today, I thought it would be fun to do a little video about our NICU experience with triplets. <laughs> He's like so happy. I deliver 32 weeks via C-section. That is known as average for a triplet pregnancy. Firstborn baby A was Lexi. She was born at three pounds, five ounces. Baby B was Zoe, three pounds, two ounces, our smallest. And C was Lincoln, and he was four pounds, two ounces. So all were so tiny. So of course they all straight went on oxygen, CPAP for Lincoln, but they were only on that for a little bit. I think the girls were on room air like the next day or just a few hours. Lincoln was on oxygen for a little bit, but honestly just a few days. I don't even know, maybe it was like two days. I lost so much blood during my C-section, which is also normal for triplet pregnancy, but I literally had no energy. All the meds were making me throw up. I was in really bad condition after having them. I had a cold, which meant I wasn't able to hold my babies for like three days, which was also so hard and so sad. So my first time meeting them, after I got some blood and got feeling a little better and some sleep, Corey of course went and saw them and he FaceTimed me, sent me pictures, but I couldn't get in a wheelchair to go see them. So when I finally could get in a wheelchair the next day to go see them, I was able to just wash my hands and put my hands in there and touch them and that was it. I wasn't able to hold them. Even then I was so nervous because I didn't want to get them sick. That first day, it was just kind of a shocker to see all of your babies being so tiny and they're just in these little incubators to help keep them warm, keep their body temperature up because they don't have enough fat on their bodies to be able to maintain their body temperature. And so they have to stay in these incubators until they can keep their temperature up on their own. And after about three days, I was able to go in there and actually hold them. My cold had died away. This was also during COVID time. I had to be really careful. Other hard part about the NICU, because me and Corey were saying like, no one has ever seen our triplets as small as we saw them. Like we tried to explain how tiny they were. No one physically was there to see them that small except me and Corey. In the NICU, they didn't let grandparents in. They didn't let Emery in, like siblings or anything. So yeah, it was just me and Corey who could see them, which was so hard. The nurse taught us the routine with their cares. So every three hours, check their temperature, make sure it was good and do a quick bum change which was so hard. So I usually had to, because Corey felt like his hands were too big. You gotta change them in those incubators. So you had to put your hands through the tiny little holes they had to change their teeny, teeny, tiny diapers. The smallest diapers I've ever seen. And so hard with all the cords and wires to change their bums. And every three hours, we would give them the tiniest little bit. It was a one mil syringe that we would slowly, you have a binky in their mouth and you slowly squirt in the milk and we had some donor breast milk in the NICU that they gave our babies and they would just squirt that on the side to try to get them to learn how to suck because when they are preemies like that they don't come out just knowing how to have that suck reflux but of course they're not able to eat that much and so they just put it through a feeding tube which is through their nose into their stomach. They would do cares every three hours. We would try to get there right at the beginning. We would start and just go down the line and while Corey was finishing one, I'd go to the next and then start Lexi, Zoe, and then Lincoln. And then after we did all of their cares, we would see if we could hold one, but they also need their sleep. And Lexi seemed to be the tired one all the time. So we would try to hold her right after her cares because they want them to sleep and not have that interrupted because that's where they grow the most. So Corey would usually hold one while I would do some cares on, on one of the others. And then, yeah, we would try to hold all three of them because they wouldn't let us hold them all three at first together. And so the first time we got to hold two together was the girls. So their beds were the closest together, their little incubators. And they gave us each one and our chairs were right by each other and so at that moment we put them together and it was the cutest thing to see my two baby girls by each other again and they just seemed so happy and so content <laughs> so, cute. so one of the best times ever we walked into the NICU one day one of the nurses said do you want to hold all three of them together 
and I was just like, oh my gosh, yes. <laughs> He's like so happy. Are you so happy, bud? <laughs> There's those eyes. Oh, Lexi's smiling. <laughs> She's like, I got milk, I'm happy. <laughs> Those eyes are so hard to open. <laughs> are your eyes so hard to open? Until that moment that I finally got to hold my three babies all together for the first time outside of the womb was one of the best moments of my life. Like, I longed for that moment to have all three back in my arms again and just seeing how happy and content they all were together made me so happy. Like, it's just crazy because the moment we put all three together, especially Lincoln, like, he just kept smiling and it was the cutest thing. Like, oh, I got my sisters on both sides of me. I got my sisters back. Like, he was so happy. And we tried, like, after that, <laughs> pretty much every day we went in, I was like, I wanna hold all three together. I wanna hold all three. <laughs> And I know that can be annoying for some nurses and I didn't do it every single day, but I did a lot of days, but I just wanted all three to be together and I'm a nurse and I kind of, I know how the monitors and all the system works. So I got comfortable at the end where I could just like do it myself. I would just, Corey would hold one, I would go give him another and then I would go get the third myself. So the nurses really didn't have to do anything right there, but it was the sweetest thing, just having all three of them together. It's like, Whoa. Oh, she wants to hold your hand. <laughs> He's like looking next to him. He's like, look at uh, your sisters. I got discharged from the hospital. I was so excited to go see Emery because it had been the longest I had ever gone without seeing her. I missed her so much. That was the hardest part of being in the hospital. I just cried and cried because I couldn't see her. And so when I got home, we were so excited to see her. We just spent the day with her. A lot of people I know will stay in the NICU and they have like a better something for parents. I don't know exactly how it works because we didn't do it. We would go home every single night. The hospital's 35 minutes from us and we would drive up every single day just because we wanted to come back and be with Emery. I didn't want her to have to be away from us too. I want to still give her that time because she's about to have the hardest transition with going from an only child to having three baby siblings. We would spend time with her and then we'd try to hit at the beginning of one of the triplets cares. Me and Corey drove up every single day together. My mom would come watch Emery and yeah, that's what we did every single day for 30 days until the girls got to come home finally. They also started doing baths on them. So we did make it for every bath in the NICU because their body temperature drops when they're outside of that incubator. You have to have a blanket in warm water wrapped around them. So you'd wrap them in the blanket and then put them in the water and then take one arm out at a time, put it back in the blanket, do a leg, put the leg back in the blanket, like to try to keep them warm. Then one of the most stressful things was when it came to them drinking out of a bottle. You have to do it a specific way. You have to have them on their side and then the bottle just leaving half of the nipple full of milk and the other half empty. Tilt it into their mouth, let them suck, and then just tip it back so that there's no milk in the bottle so that they'll actually take a breath. If you don't, they'll just keep drinking and not take a breath and desac because they don't know how to suck and breathe at this point. They gotta learn how to do both. And so that was so stressful. But like I said, the girls, they did pretty good. And each day they got better and better. Same with Lincoln. Each day he got better and better, would drink more and more. And in the end, that's what it came down to. They were able to get in some just normal cribs and keep their body temperature up. But what it came down to was could they take in enough mils of formula? So that's mainly what we were waiting on to bring 
all of them home near the end was they just needed to drink enough on their own. We're very blessed and lucky that each day we went in, it seemed like we had some bit of good news and some form of progression, which was awesome. They did brain scans on them in there. They do hearing and sight. They do like all those scans testing and thank goodness they were all good. Lincoln did have a hernia, so that was a little stressful. Near the end, he was able to drink enough, but he did have to have the hernia surgery before he could come home. I would call the night nurse every single night to get an update and they would do their weights every single night before bed so I could find out if they had gained weight every single night, which I loved. That was like one of my favorite things, just to just see them gaining weight, because that was our goal. I would call every night, and then I'd also call once we woke up in the morning to find out how they did throughout the night. We'd get updates morning and night, and the nurses, for the most part, were so nice, so good, and would take the best care of our babies. There was one nurse, she was so nice. She even sent me pictures of my babies. I gave her my number I just asked if she could like text me because I missed them so much and she was so good to do that like I said we probably had less of a stay than others do when they're born super early like that we were very blessed that all of our children were healthy before they go home to you bring in your car seats they do a car seat test for overnight all of them passed I would say the hardest part of our NICU experience was definitely just not being able to be there all the time. Hi. You're so big. You're so cute. But also like wanting to be with Emery and also super hard that our parents couldn't come see and Emery because we wanted them to meet them like right off the bat and they couldn't. That was probably the hardest part and then third hardest part was of course the girls getting discharged and having to still leave Lincoln up there by himself that was probably one of the top hard for me I feel like for our NICU experience like it does sound weird but I feel like having three babies in there together did make it a little easier on me like sounds weird but I just feel like oh they have each other you know they're okay like I didn't feel so bad leaving them where if I just have one baby and they're like Lincoln near the end every single day, I just felt so bad leaving him. Also, I will say I am grateful for the NICU because one, it allowed me to fully recover without having to instantly come home and take care of a baby because that is so hard. And two, it also helped the babies to be able to get on a schedule and a sleep track and really helped once we brought them home to be able to sleep through the night. It took a little bit after they came home, but we did it. And if you watch my past videos, we tell kind of about how we got our triplets sleeping through the night. So that's kind of all I have for you today. Hope you enjoyed this video and we'll see you guys on the next vlog.